All right. If there has been one sleeping giant supplement that has been put to rest and is now making a resurgence online, it's creatine. Okay. As you probably know, it's simple. It's safe. It has been backed by decades and decades of research in the muscular realm. Now it is making this resurgence online in the cognitive realm, okay? But still, most people have no idea what's going on inside their bodies. We've had a ton of clients at Future ask about what exactly creatine does, what results can they expect. So if you're somebody who trains hard, loves to perform under pressure, and just wants to get the most out of your recovery, understanding creatine, it could unlock one of like by far the simplest advantages available. So let's get right into it. What's going on YouTube? My name is Mike. I'm one of the coaches over here at Future Fitness. And today we are going to do a deep dive on creatine, okay? So you may have heard some wild claims online, right? Like five grams is not enough, or you should mega dose creatine, or 20 to 25 grams feels like speed for your brain. It feels like cheating. What does that actually mean, right? Is that science or is it content? So today we're going to dissect that. And I'm going to look at this from both a scientific lens as well as a practical coaching lens. And so what we're going to do is we're going to break down how creatine works, how it's absorbed, what the research says, and realistically, what are the benefits that you can actually expect when you start taking it? So let's dive right into that. So first and foremost, we're just going to do a little housekeeping here. If you have chronic kidney disease, if you have diabetes or any other chronic health issue, Consult with your doctor before taking it. Okay. That's first and foremost, just to, you know, check that box, make sure you're good to go. All right. Next, we're going to talk about creatine monohydrate. So it is by far the most researched form of creatine studied. Um, there's been other, other forms of it, like creatine HCL and a couple other ones. Right. And from my experience, a lot of my clients do really, really well on creatine monohydrate, but some have gastrointestinal issues, bloating like severe bloating and things like that. And creatine HCL seems to alleviate a lot of those. So if that's your case, that may be better. Now, I would just caution you against brands that will market other forms of creatine as having superior performance benefits to creatine monohydrate. That's simply not the case, right? Research, there hasn't been one legit study that has come out that has shown that any other form of creatine other than monohydrate has the most superior benefits, okay? So what is creatine, right? Creatine is a naturally occurring compound. It's found mostly in the muscles and in the brain, okay? And we can get some of that creatine through food such as meats, right? Steak, fish, pork, things like that. But you're only getting about 0.5 to 0.75 grams per four ounces. So if you do the math on that, just imagine how much meat you'd actually need to eat on a daily basis just to get the five grams, right? So that's why it's very necessary to supplement with creatine, especially if you're a vegetarian, right? It helps regenerate ATP. And ATP is your body's main energy currency, especially when you're doing short explosive activities, you know, like lifting heavy, heavy weight, sprinting, jumping, or doing any type of HIT activity, so high intensity interval training. All right. So that's why it's important to supplement with creatine. You're basically topping off your phosphocreatine stores, which allow you to train a little bit harder, recover a little bit faster, and maybe think a little bit sharper. Right. So an intense hour of training, okay, can burn anywhere from roughly three to five grams worth of creatine, which is exactly why most of the research done has studied that five gram per day recommendation. All right, so we're gonna first target this from a scientific lens. And full disclosure, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a researcher, I'm a coach. And so I love reading the research to figure out how the studies were designed, the methods they used, what the results they saw were, and then kind of connect the dots on how that applies to the real world. So first question we're gonna answer is, how does creatine work? How is it absorbed? Second one is gonna be, what does the research conclude on creatine's effect on muscle mass? Okay. And then the third one is going to be, you know, this new exciting research that's coming out about the cognitive effects that creatine has, right? And then maybe where influencer claims can kind of be misconstrued. Okay. So first things first, we're going to talk about how creatine works. 
which is in the real world setting, I'm going to talk about a practical setting, right? So I already gave you the example of how creatine binds to phosphate, those bind to ADP, that creates ATP, you know, and that replenishes energy, okay? So now that we got that taken care of, I want to talk about the different energy systems, all right? So we got the ATP PCR system, the anaerobic system, and the aerobic system. So you'll see this graph above here. And the main thing I want to stress on everyone is that there's a misconception that these are like light switches where we can turn off one system, turn on the other, vice versa. Um, the reality is that all three of these systems are working from second one to however long the activity lasts. It could be 10 hours, could be one minute. Every system is working. It's just at a different ratio. And when you talk about activities like sprinting, jumping, high intensity lifting, things like that, they're within that 10 to 12 second range. So that's why taking creatine is extremely beneficial for these activities. It ramps up, drops down, and you need to replenish that really quickly in order to repeat that activity, okay? So then we talk about how is creatine absorbed, okay? It is very dependent on transporters and concentration gradients. Okay, so transporters are like the shuttles. We have intercells, so muscular cells, brain cells, things like that. But then we have the extracellular fluid, stuff outside the cells. The transporters is what shuttle the creatine into those cells, all right? So when we talk about concentration gradient, it's all dependent upon demand and availability, right? So if the demand is high and the availability is high, it's going to flow to where the low concentration is. So when we talk about the real world, if you're lifting super, super hard, the creatine in the muscle is going to be depleted. And so it needs to be transported and replenished from the extracellular creatine into the muscle. All right. So that's why the transporters are important. But also that's why the gradients are important. And that's why creatine gets utilized in where what part of the body it's needed the most. Okay. So once the demand goes down and the availability is still super high, that's when the door gets slammed shut, right? And excess creatine gets converted into creatinine and then just gets filtered out through your kidneys. So this is why you may see some influencers who do these 30 day tests on taking 15 to 30 grams of creatine per day. And they notice a side effect that they have to pee more. Well, Duh, because your kidneys are working overtime for no reason. And that's why you're, that's why you're having to pee more. Okay, so we'll, take, we'll, we'll side note that here. Next question we want to answer, you know, what does the research conclude on increasing muscle mass? It's very, very straightforward, okay? Immediate strength gains, especially in compound lifts, that makes sense because you're now able to repeat that action, right, with more energy availability, Within the first couple of weeks, you notice one to two kgs of lean body mass, right? Could be water weight, could be muscle, since both are, in, are included in the lean body mass measurements. Three to four month mark, two to four kgs increase in muscle mass. Great. Okay. And then long term, right? It just helps preserve muscle mass as we age. All right. So that's kind of what the research in a nutshell is saying. So now we're going to go to the more limited research on the cognitive benefits. So you'll see in the graphics above, these are research studies that I've personally read. These are research studies that fitness influencers are talking about online. So I just kind of want to summarize the findings for them. So one summarization of the findings, right? Creatine improves cognitive performance when you're under significant stress, particularly in working memory and reaction time. The effectiveness in these studies was found way more pronounced in vegetarians who have a lower baseline level of creatine, less effective in healthy, well-rested individuals. That doesn't mean they're not effective. They're just not as effective as if you're a vegetarian in terms of the difference here. All right. So one thing I want to note here is the studies are comparing two different groups and both groups are sleep deprived. Okay. So some influencers will say, yeah, taking 20, 25 grams of creatine, it's like better than if you got a well-rested night of sleep. Where in the world are they getting this from? I have no idea because these studies are sleep depriving both the placebo group and the creatine group. So how are they getting that? I'm not sure, right? So 20 grams of creatine 
it does help mitigate some of the effects of poor sleep, but it doesn't completely negate them to where you immediately feel like you just got a great night's sleep just because you're taking creatine. So the main effects of poor sleep are less pronounced when you're taking these. This is, this is what the studies find, but it does not completely negate them. Is that That's something I want to stress here, all right? So the practical explanation of these results, creatine helps whatever area of your body is under pressure. If you train hard, the body is going to divert creatine into the muscles in order to complete the task. If you're not working out and you had a terrible night of sleep, it acts like a backup battery for your brain under high stress that allows you to get through the day just a little bit better. But it's not a magic pill because if we think about kind of that concentration gradient I was talking about, high demand in the brain as far as a cognitive load for the amount of work that you have to do and you're very depleted because you got a poor night of sleep. So creatine is going to go right to that spot, especially if you're not working out. Why feed the muscles if we're not going to utilize it? All right. So I just want to stress here before we move on to the next section. This is very limited research. New stages. It is very exciting, but take it for what it is. All right. We have come to the end of the road here on this deep dive. So last section, I'm going to talk about it from the lens of my coaching brain. All right. So... With that being said, I'm going to give you some realistic expectations, not what the research says, but in a practical sense, what you can expect, how much you should take depending on who you are and what you do and when you should take it. Okay. So first and foremost, I want to get this out of the way. I want to stress the importance that creatine is not a magic pill. Okay. You have to combine it with proper nutrition. Okay. Sufficient protein, sufficient carbohydrates. Okay. Calories too as well as hard training, all right? So want to get that out of the way. It's just like steroids. If you take steroids alone and don't train, you're not going to be Superman, all right? So now that that's out of the way, let's get into kind of what you can realistically expect. And I'll, I'll talk about my personal experience. And so I have been on and off creatine for the better part of 10 years where there's been two years straight. I've been on it five grams a day, like clockwork, nothing more, nothing less. Then there's been other years where I haven't even touched it. And I will say that the effects that I've seen have been subtle, but noticeable, right? So over those 10 years, I've been constantly analyzing and connecting these dots on trends that I've noticed and very subtle effects, right? So the two main effects that I've seen, one, delayed onset of fatigue, and two, an increase in capacity. So the delayed onset of fatigue, I would say that if I have an hour long hard session, I'm going hard from minute zero to minute 60. Around that 40 to 45 minute mark, I notice I start to get really mentally fatigued. It's not like I'm crazy sore, but just feeling low in energy. Well, after that, my effort tanks off of a cliff for those last 15 minutes. So the quality of work goes down significantly. Now, when I was on creatine, okay, that time to fatigue was delayed by about 15 to 20 minutes. So instead of hitting right around that 40 to 45 minute mark, I didn't start feeling fatigued until around that 60 to 65 minute mark. So the quality of work stayed high for longer. Okay. On top of that, increase in muscular capacity. So I love the eight rep range. Okay. Uh, it is my sweet spot. It's the mix of strength and hypertrophy. You get a nice little muscle pump while you're also lifting super heavy weight. And when I wasn't on creatine, I would do X amount of weight. Let's just take hundred pound dumbbells for bench press for eight reps. Okay. That eighth rep on the last set would feel very hard to where I could not do another one. Well, once I started taking creatine immediately, I noticed myself being able to push for that ninth rep on every set, not just the last one, but on every set. Okay. And that makes sense based off what we were just talking about with the ATP PCR system. It is very rapidly replenishing your ATP stores to where you can just repeat that effort for maybe one more time. And so then if we connect the dots here on why the research is seeing increases in muscle mass, it's because of that. It's not the creatine alone. That's why it has to be combined with the work that you're doing because progress is going to be kind of seen from an accumulation of volume and intensity and also the nutrition to back it up. 
So that's why you're seeing increases in muscle mass is because you're able to push harder in the gym, but you have to keep that at the forefront of your mind. Don't just go through the motions, even though you're on creatine. Okay. So how much creatine should you take? If you're just looking for general fitness, like we talked about in the beginning, an hour of lifting hard weights is going to utilize anywhere from three to five grams. So five grams a day, that's plenty. You don't need to take anything more, anything less. All right. Now I've had certain clients and I myself, you know, I've trained for Ironmans, triple bypass races where I'm doing biking and running and lifting weights in the same day. Uh, that's going to utilize way more than five grams of creatine. So during those times and for those clients who are doing multiple activities per day, it would probably be beneficial if you take more 10, 15 grams. I would say that's plenty though. All right. You start with 10, see how you feel. Now, if you are somebody who got a poor night of sleep, like I know you're high performers and the next day you still got to take care of business. You still got to go to work and you got to perform well at your job on those specific days. 20, 25 grams might be the way to at least help you restore cognitive function to where you're able to get the work done on that day at a high level. All right. Now I would caution you against taking that multiple days in a row or making that a standard because you're not going to need it. And anything extra is just going to be processed and filtered through your kidneys. So your kidneys are going to work overtime for no reason at all. Okay. When should you take it? Last thing I want to touch on pre versus post workout. Pre workout, you're going to get a little bit more performance enhancement because creatine is going to be more readily available and it'll give you the benefits that I was talking about before. Post workout is going to be more of a recovery tool. So you just utilize and depleted all your creatine stores during your workout. If you're replenishing those right away, you're just starting the recovery process a lot faster. And the recovery process is actually where the gains are made. Okay, so that's kind of to summarize everything here from this creatine topic. Now, if you have any questions, anything you're curious about, drop a comment, subscribe, and we'll talk soon. Take care.